This is DJ Shortcut, and you're watching Levels of, levels of, levels of Turntablism. Today I've been challenged to explain turntablism in 15 levels of increasing complexity. A lot of stuff that turntablism encompasses come from the foundation of DJing. Turntablism is the art of using the turntable as a musical instrument to produce entirely new musical compositions. The two most known sounds that we use in scratching is fresh and awe. Fresh and Awe comes from a song called Change the Beat by Fab Five Freddy. The sounds fresh and awe are pretty sharp and pretty clear from the minute you release the record. Just on the release alone, you know how sharp it comes in. This is level one, the baby scratch. This scratch was invented by Grand Wizard Theodore from New York. There's two types of baby scratches. A short one, otherwise known as a tip. I look at the platter as a clock. I have a line on my record. The mark will show us where each sound is. Position wise, it would be from 12 o'clock to one o'clock. And a long baby scratch, which would be from 12 o'clock to two o'clock. I'm applying enough pressure on the record where I can still see the slip mat right under the record still rotate. For the baby scratch, my fader stays open and my hand stays on the platter. With the baby scratch, you want to make sure that you get a little bit of the air right before the sound starts so you can hear the sound in full. Now, let's do a combination of both baby scratches with a beat. One of the things to keep in mind is there's four beats to a bar. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Counting bars help us keep time to when we scratch to these beats. Whether you tap your foot, nod your head, move side to side, sway back and forth, that's how you keep time counting bars. For level two, we're increasing complexity by manipulating the amount of pressure on the platter while using the crossfader. Level two, push, release, and drags. A push scratch creates a higher tone. A drag scratch produces a lower tone. And a release scratch produces a mid tone. To do these scratches, we start with the fader closed. With level one, we use the light amount of pressure on the platter. With the push, my hand position is at nine o'clock and I'm pushing the record forward, applying a good amount of pressure onto the platter to produce a higher pitch. For the drag scratch, we add pressure to the platter to create a breaking sound. I'm moving the crossfader from the closed position to the open position, and I'm moving the record from 12 o'clock to about 2 o'clock. A release scratch requires you to release the record right when the sound starts to play at its normal speed, while moving the crossfader to the open position. And this is what it sounds like with a beat. The most common mistakes when we do these scratches is your hand placement on the record. You want to make sure your hand is in the 9 o'clock position. That way you have enough space between 9 o'clock to about 12 and then back to 6 o'clock where you don't end up knocking the needle off the record. For the next level, we're going to increase complexity by adding speed and sharper cuts. This is level 3, the stab scratch. This scratch starts with a fader in the closed position, kind of similar to the push scratch. My hand's on the 9 o'clock position, and I'm moving forward while moving the crossfader into the open position. Right away, I'm pulling back the fader to the closed position while moving the record back to the original position. The difference between the push scratch and the stab scratch is I'm adding a little bit of speed while using the crossfader. My hand never leaves the record. As I'm pushing the record forward, I'm moving my crossfader to the open position at the same time. But right away, I'm pulling the record back and the crossfader back to the close position without hearing the reverse sound. And this is what it sounds like with a beat. A common mistake is not moving fast enough and hearing the reverse sound. Right there, I'm hearing the reverse sound, which you're not supposed to do in a stab scratch. In this next level, we're about to increase complexity with our crossfader. This is level four, the chirp scratch. This scratch was made popular by DJ Jazzy Jeff in the song, The Magnificent Jazzy Jeff. So my fader starts in the open position. As I'm moving the record forward, I'm moving the crossfader back to the closed position. 
The crossfader functions like an on and off switch. The coordination between the fader and the record is important to practice in order to catch the beginning or the tip of the sound, producing the chirp. The second part of the scratch is moving the crossfader back to the open position while moving the record back to the top of the sound. Now this is what it sounds like with a beat. The most important thing to remember about this scratch is the coordination between the record and the fader. For the next level, we're about to increase complexity with our timing and hand control. This is level five, tears. Similar to the baby scratch, your hand never leaves the platter for the tear. But what's different with the tear scratch is adding an additional push, which sounds like a split or tear in the sound. The most common tear scratch is the motion of moving the record forward and moving the record back twice. My hand position is at 9 o'clock, marker is at 12 o'clock, and my crossfader is open. The most common mistake when doing the tear scratch is not accentuating each movement on the platter. This is what the tear scratch sounds like with a beat. In the next level, we're about to increase complexity with speed and rhythm. This is level six, the transform scratch. That name would come from the sound the robots would make from the early 80s cartoon, The Transformers. This scratch has been associated with DJ Cash Money and Jazzy Jeff. So what we're doing here is using the crossfader as an on and off switch. While moving the record back and forth, my hand position is at nine o'clock and I'm moving the record back and forth, pretty much a baby scratch, while moving the crossfader off and on. We'll do this with two clicks. Now to get a circular motion in that sound, we'll move the record back and forth, clicking the crossfader twice in both directions. Now you can add more clicks to this scratch to get different patterns. For the transform scratch, if you use longer sounds, you'll be able to add more clicks within that sound. This all sound starts from 12 o'clock to about five o'clock. I'll add as much clicks as I can within that, moving the record back and forth. This is what the transform scratch sounds like with the beat. So with this scratch, the principal rhythm maker comes from your movement on the crossfader. Level seven, fades. The fade scratch is a combination of either doing tears or babies on the platter while moving the volume control from 10 to one, giving it that loud to soft effect. The speed can change depending on what tempo you're scratching to. This is what the fade scratch sounds like with a beat. In the next level, we're going to do a combination of all the techniques we've learned so far. Level 8, a combination of levels 1 through 7 over a beat. One of the most common mistakes when you do combos of all those scratches is not being able to pace yourself. In the next level of increasing complexity, we're about to take on one of the most difficult scratches involving the crossfader, level nine, the crab scratch. The origins of the crab scratch came from the UK by a DJ named DJ XL, who named it the twiddle. He was using both of his fingers on the crossfader while using his thumb as resistance to create off and on sounds. Kubert came up with the idea to utilize all his fingers 
from his pinky to his index finger to skate across the in and out position as your thumb acts like a spring to close the fader back. My hands on the nine o'clock position. I have my sound starting at 12 o'clock. The platter movement is basically a baby scratch. So basically I'm rolling and clicking my fingers from pinky to index finger as my thumb works as a spring to move the fader back to the open position. <laughs> This is what the crab scratch sounds with a beat. The most common mistake when you do a crab scratch is not sounding fluid with it. You try to get every click in there. Some people actually use their ring finger to their index finger while doing the crab scratch. I like using all four fingers from pinky to index to get that full effect and to get all those clicks in there. This is what it sounds like from your ring finger to your index finger. But when you add your pinky in there, you get a lot more clicks in there. In the next level, we're about to increase complexity with our fader control. Level 10, the one click flare. So we start with an open fader. After doing a trip forward, immediately reopen the fader. The second half of the scratch is rewinding the record back to the top of the sound. The fader is open and do a reverse chirp and immediately open the fader. This is how we do the one click flare with a beat. So the one click flare is definitely a hard scratch to get right away. It's gonna take a lot of practice because you have to be in sync with the fader and the platter movement to get that one click to make two sounds. We're about to increase complexity by adding more clicks to the one click flare. This is level 11, the two click flare, otherwise known as the orbit scratch. The orbit scratch or the two click flare was created by a DJ named DJ Disc from the Visible Scratch Pickles. Just like the one click flare, we add one click and made two sounds. Now we're adding two clicks to create three sounds. You're starting your crossfader in the open position. As you move your platter forward, you're clicking the crossfader twice, but ending again in the open position. Now to complete the scratch, we're gonna do the same motions back and forth. Two clicks forward, two clicks backward, but ending the crossfader in the middle position. This is what the two click flare sounds like over a beat. One of the most common mistakes when you do a two click flare is it kind of might sound like a transform as it comes out first. It's one of those scratches where you have to find your sweet spot. You'll know you'll have the two click flare when you hear kind of a rolling circular motion. That's why it's called an orbit where it's just kind of traveling. When I do the two click flare, I kind of do a galloping motion on the crossfader. And you'll find that roll somewhere as you move the record back and forth. For the next level, we're about to increase complexity by layering multiple scratch techniques. Level 12, the rhythm scratch. The rhythm scratch was a popular scratch done in the 80s by DJs like Jazzy Jeff, Magic Mike, DJ Aladdin. The rhythm scratch is made of five baby scratches. Two normal babies, one short baby, another normal baby, and one short one. When you put all those together, it sounds like this. With this scratch, we don't use the crossfader. It solely relies on your hand motion on the platter. For this demonstration, I'll be using the pitch control to move the beat from a slow BPM to a faster one. For the next level, we're increasing complexity by making a beat off one turntable. Level 13, drum scratching. One of the first times I heard drum scratching was Jam Master J on a Run DMC record called Here We Go Live at the Fun House. In the beginning of that record, Jam Master J would grab a kick and a snare off one record and make a drum beat. Boom, butcha, boom, boom, butcha. I have my kick at 12 o'clock 
in my snare at about two o'clock. We have to be very accurate while doing drum scratches because if you get it in the middle of the sound, it'll sound kind of sloppy and muddy. You want to get even a little bit of that air before the sound starts to get it crispy. We're going back and forth from sound to sound and holding those sounds and isolating them as we go. When you do the drum scratch, you definitely have to have some kind of internal metronome in you. Swaying back and forth, tapping your foot. You don't really see any live drummers just kind of stiff and just doing that, right? They're still kind of grooving. Same thing applies when we do the drum scratch. Knowing the position where you are on the record, using the clock system, knowing where your marks are at is key to the scratch. So while doing the drum scratch, I wasn't using the crossfader. I was using the volume control to be able to go back and forth from kick to snare. That's just my preference. Or you could use the crossfader. In this level, we're about to increase complexity with one of the most advanced art forms in turntablism. Level 14, beat juggling. One of the first times I heard beat juggling was from a DJ named Steve D from New York, from the Executioners, originally known as the X-Men. Basically, he was creating a new pattern from existing records and doing live manual remixing back and forth from turntable to turntable, normally done with two of the same copies of records. For this demonstration, on my left turntable, I'll have a kick, and on my right turntable, I'll have a snare. I'll basically make a pattern and creating a complete bar, going back and forth from kick to snare. Think of beat juggling as a cut and paste method. You're continuing the beat pattern from where you left off on one turntable by moving the crossfader to the other turntable in order to resume the sequence. Doing this, you'll have to have a good amount of cadence, rhythm, and have that internal metronome like we did with drum scratching. Basically, it's drumming, but with two turntables. It's also important not to hear any residual sound from the turntable that you just moved the crossfader from so that you complete a clean transition from one platter to the other. For this final level of increasing complexity, we're about to do everything that we learned right now all in one. This is level 15, a combination of all levels. So with everything we learned today, like I said, it takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience, and a lot of focus. I hope watching this video inspires you. You'll never know what you find out messing with two turntables, either whether you scratch or make beat juggle routines up. Stay true to what you're doing. Stay true to the craft. Once you find something out that maybe no one knows, share that with people because that's what makes this art form evolve and grow. 